Working together to make a better community. We can create a brighter day. Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Duncan Mishano, the chief of Big Tagon Anishinaabe. Um, my apologies, Duncan, for my pronunciation. Welcome to the yeah. show. Hello. Uh, Duncan, tell me a little about a little bit about yourself. Uh, give me some of your background. Well, maybe first with my age. <laughs> we'll start there. Uh, I was born in November 28, 1945, so I'm 74 years old. 75 in the end of this end of this uh, month. Uh, I was born in uh, Pilacri, Scotland. Uh, my dad was a Canadian soldier during the Second World War, and mum was obviously a war bride. We both came over to Canada, my mum and I. Uh, dad came home early uh, as the war was winding down. Uh, my mum and I came over uh, in March 1946, and I've lived here ever since, except for two years when I was in uh college uh sent for fleming in lindsay uh my wife and i lived there for a couple of years without well, that i've lived in big Tikong all my life uh, and uh, i love the north shore of uh, uh lake superior i think it's the best place to live in, in the entire world uh i went to school in big Tikong. uh i went to high school in marathon and like I said, I went to college in Sanford Plumbing and, and uh, Lindsay. And uh, I've worked uh, in mining. Uh, I've worked in the forestry. Uh, I've worked in the mills in Marathon. And in 1974, I uh, started working uh, for Parks Canada. And I worked there for uh, 36 years. I retired uh, in Parks Canada in 2013, and uh, I uh, ran for chief, and I've been chief since then. It's going on my seventh year now. And prior to 2013, I was in council for 24 years also. So I know a little bit about the challenges uh, uh, that First Nations uh, uh, face uh, uh, in regards to trying to run their communities. So it, tell me a little bit about your community, Bitcoin. Um First, where, where is it located? And, and you know, uh, how many residents, uh, how many members of the community? Yeah, yeah Bitcoin, uh is about a couple of minutes from uh, Lake Superior, uh, right on the North Shore, Lake Superior. And we're about uh, 20 minutes from Marathon. Uh, and again, located about uh, three and a half hours drive from Thunder Bay and four and a half drive, uh, hours drive from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. So we're right on the north shore of the Lake Superior. We feel that nice cool breeze uh, off that lake all summer long. So it, it's awesome. It, it is a beautiful part of the world. Uh, every yeah. time I go across uh, the North Shore, yeah. which is not very yeah. often, but uh, I yeah. kind of go, this rivals any other place I've ever been in, in terms of beauty. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, I, think, I really honestly believe that it's the best place to, work, uh, to live in the whole world. We don't have earthquakes. We don't have uh, uh, huge floods. We don't have tornadoes. Uh, we don't have hurricanes. We've got minus 40 below weather, but uh, but on another coat, you know, big deal. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, our community, our community is about uh, uh, here on uh, on the community. We have about 500 people. We've got another 500 people living uh, scattered around the world. Uh, a lot in Thunder Bay, actually. There's about a hundred in Thunder Bay. Uh, some in Sault Ste. Marie, but again, scattered all around the country and some even in the States. And and how I wonder about that relationship between um, the folks who know that aren't presently uh, living in the community, 
uh, like you say, the folks in Thunder Bay or, or, or around the world. How, how, how does that work? How, how, does the, how, how are people viewed once they, they leave the community? They, t they, tr they try to keep in touch, but uh, uh, most of the people who leave the community are, uh, uh, have left because of economic reasons. You know, uh, if you can't find work or there's no work or there's no housing, you got to go and live somewhere else. Uh, and that's what a lot of them have done. And some were born outside the reserve. So that's natural to them to just, uh, 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 you know, continue living outside the reserve, uh, outside our community. But uh, a lot of them, and especially some of the younger people are trying to return and got, and return when they can and are trying to catch up on our history and trying to catch up on our culture. So a lot of them are trying to return. But uh, you need work, you need uh, someplace to live and uh, you need work. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I, well, all, all of our kids left home here in Thunder Bay you know, at one point in time, and and I feel like I've spent a lot of my life trying to make sure they come back. And my oldest granddaughter, who's going to be 24 the next month, um, moved to Toronto a couple of years ago, and I said, "So you know, you have to come back." And she okay. said, "Oh yeah, I'll be back at Christmas." I said, "No, no, you have to come back and live here because yeah. you right. know that's right. important." You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> who knows what will happen though? <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me, uh, what what are are some of the challenges you're facing in your community these days? Hmm. And 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 then following that, of course, is 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 how do you how do you address those challenges? Right, right. Uh, I guess the biggest challenge is trying to find space, basically, for uh, for people that uh, space and. Uh, uh, the housing to go along with that because we've got uh, only uh, 800 acres here. Our, our uh, uh, land base is pretty small uh, and we have 500 people sitting here and half of that 800 acres is in swamp. Uh, some of the houses basically, you know, we've had to fill the the, the swamp and with backfill uh, to, to, in order to build houses. Uh, so the, those are the kinds of challenges we face. Uh, cool. the, the, the funding to run our communities also, as everybody knows, uh, even municipalities, that you need money to run a community. And uh, uh, the funding that uh, uh, First Nations uh, received from uh, the federal government is inadequate. There's always shortfalls. There's, there's not enough money to to uh, uh, run a community adequate, adequately. So that that's one of the reasons a lot of the mm -hmm. First Nations are trying to get into economic development so that they can get their own source revenue, OSR we call it, own source revenue, which doesn't have the strings tied to it like the federal funding. Uh, uh, when you look at things like a fire department, and I always use that as an example, we have a, a good fully functioning fire department here. They're having a little bit of trouble recruiting uh, younger people, but uh, uh, they're always out there on Tuesdays uh, 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 practicing and training. Uh, however, they need money to do that. They need money because you have to pay those volunteer firefighters a little bit of uh, money as an incentive. Uh, so, you you know, you give them an honorarium every time they come out training, every time they respond to a fire. Uh, you can't expect volunteer firefighters to do uh, for absolutely nothing. Uh, you need to buy their gear. Uh, you need to buy all the, the update of equipment. Uh, uh, buying and uh, buying a fire truck and uh, capital equipment like that is not that hard. You can always find the money to do that, but then you got to maintain it. Um, you got to train the guys to do it. Uh, 
the amount of money that Beat the Gong gets based on our funding formulas for firefighting is $35,000 a year. The guys have to change their bunker gear every five years. That's a, a requirement. You need to get new bunker gear every five years. $35,000 over that five years doesn't even cover the amount of money needed to buy new bunker gear, let alone all the training. So we subsidize that through own source revenue. You look at things like uh, 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 clean water and, and water systems. Uh, again, uh, uh, you can get capital dollars to upgrade your water system. And we, we're in a process of doing that right now. But you still need money to maintain that system. You still need money to train the people because the, the people need uh, uh, certification and they got to keep that certification up to date. So we subsidize uh, uh, our water system and the training and the maintenance through own source revenue. It's the same thing with education. The education system is getting better now that we're part of KEB. The funding is a little bit better. But where we can, we still subsidize uh, 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 education through own source, own source revenue uh, because uh, we uh, have embarked on land-based learning basically taking the kids out and that costs money and that's not something that comes down from the federal government the whole issues and issues in regards to federal government funding in regards to salaries there's no pot of money that comes down for salaries so who pays who pays for uh, that band manager who pays for that health director who pays for that social services director who pays for the for the maintenance manager those dollars either got to come from the existing programs so the managers have to manage their budgets well because that's where the dollars salary dollars got to come from or we pay for it out of own source revenue so that whole idea of own source revenue uh, uh, that we need uh, uh, in order to run our communities properly. If we didn't have own source revenue uh, from our power plants, we'd have to lay a lot of people off. We just wouldn't be able to keep them. And then our, com our community wouldn't be functioning as properly as it should be and as properly as it is today because there's too many shortfalls uh, 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 in the federal government funding. And the whole issue again in own source revenue and why we embark on these projects and economic development is because uh, being a federal entity, we don't have the ability to tax corporations in the surrounding area. We don't have that ability. The municipalities have that ability. Uh, so X mining company comes in, the municipality can tax them. We don't. We can't. There's no legislation that allows us to do that. So what do we do? We embark on uh, uh, IBAs, uh, impact benefit agreements and, and things like that to get our share of that money coming out of those certain projects. We try to work with industry uh, uh, and governments to do contracts so that we, our uh, band owned entities can gain revenue to return to the community. We make jobs at the same time, but uh, to return uh, revenue to the community so we can keep our community running. So those are the kinds of challenges that all First Nations face. That whole idea of uh, 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 revenue and trying to get own source revenue because the funding from the federal government is uh, inadequate. Uh, you look at housing. One of the things that we're trying to do, 
uh, you'll hear you'll hear uh, uh, people uh, in the First Nations community and in the federal government talking about a housing plan. A housing plan. Well, there ain't no housing plan. There ain't no such thing. Basically, you put in your needs and you wait for money to come down the tube. That's not a plan. So those are the kinds of challenges we face. Uh, uh, what we're doing here in Big Tigang is we're trying to create a, a housing authority. And um, um, it's taken a while, but uh, the plans are underway to do that. And what that uh, housing authority would do uh, is uh, going forward, uh, all the housing stock uh, that exists would stay with the band and the, and the responsibility of band. But going forward, all of the housing will be built by that housing authority. So that housing authority then has the ability to go out and, and make revenue by for, for buying up uh, for rental houses or apartment buildings uh, uh, in Thunder Bay or Sault Ste. Marie or Winnipeg or Toronto or, or Vancouver or, or whatever and return revenue back to that uh, that uh, housing authority and that housing authority would then would then uh, uh, build the houses and can plan better because right now there's no such thing as a housing plan basically you put in like i said i'll repeat this again the so-called housing plan is you 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 develop your needs and you send that up to the federal government and you wait for money to come down. So that that's not a plan, uh, you know. Uh, those are the kinds of challenges First Nations face all the time. And a lot of it uh, uh, revolves around the inadequacy of uh, uh, revenue to run your communities properly. Right, so you're, in a way, uh, you've got some of that entrepreneurial spirit or, or initiative. Uh, you're talking about your own source revenue. Um, what other projects uh, have you developed and, and that you're working on? Oh, uh, uh, well, we're, our, main, our main goal that we've embarked on probably 20, 30 years ago already is hydroelectric development and, and we're <laughs> and we're having challenges there now too because of uh, 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 the pricing uh, in regards to uh, IESO and OSB uh, the OEB and the provincial government and the provincial government's MRP market renewal plan we've got a lot of challenges uh, uh, and and concerns about where the province is going with the MRP. Uh, and it may severely, severely uh, affect our own source revenue, own source revenue that we need to run our community. Uh, uh, we've tried to find out from the provincial government uh, what their plans are in regards to MRP and, and then uh, and specifically the plants that we own, because we've got 51% ownership in Nevada Falls, which is our mainstay. We get quite a bit of revenue from that. But we also have interest in uh, 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 Weiwete on the Black River. And we also have Cagiano up uh, uh, on the Cagiano River, the Twin Falls project. Uh, so all these things provide us with a good source of own source revenue. But uh, we had plans also to expand that. And again, and that's why we were waiting for the uh, East-West tie to be built. Uh, uh, we had anticipated that uh, we would be able to put additional projects online once the East-West tie was built, so, because we were told back then that the capacity wasn't there on that single line. Now we look at what the province is doing in regards to MRP, the market renewal plan. We doubt that we'll ever be able to get another plant online. Uh, so the MRP really affected our ability to, to uh, 
I guess, uh, uh, expand our uh, power generation projects. Uh, we also have uh, 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 an interest in the East-West tie. Uh, the, the six First Nations, uh, Fort William, uh, uh, Red Rock, Pace Flat, uh, uh, Peck River, Mobert, and Mitch Pickerton have a 20% interest in that uh, East-West tie. And that'll bring us some additional revenue once that is uh, uh, commissioned. Uh, a few years time. So those are the kinds of things we're, we're getting into. We, we're trying to get uh, 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 MTO contracts. Uh, oh, it's a constant fight trying to work with MTO to get MTO contracts because of how their system works. And uh, no, uh, no real, uh, I guess, uh, capacity for including First Nations in their uh, uh, request for proposals, that that sort of thing. Uh, uh, making sure our people have enough work in those MTO contracts. Uh, the, the, their RFPs are pretty weak when it comes from, in regards to First Nations inclusions. Uh, they are uh, at the local level though, trying to trying to uh, uh, rectify a lot of that. And there, we're having some success with uh, the local MTO people, but uh, that needs to be written into legislation so that when MTO is working uh, in a First Nations traditional territory, that First Nations is included in some of those contracts. That, that has to be legislated uh, uh, instead of the First Nation trying to fight all the time to get those contracts. Uh, so again, that constant, constant struggle uh, uh, for uh, uh, own source revenue. We've got some contracts going on with the mine and uh, Barrick, and we've got a good relationship with Barrick. Uh, we're we're talking to Generation Mining, but uh, I can't uh, say much more than that at this point. Uh, but we are talking to them. Uh, and that, that's for that new platinum palladium slash copper mine north of Marathon. Uh, we're working with the uh, township of Marathon to develop the harbor and the docking facilities in Peninsula Harbor. We've uh, got an MOU signed between us uh, to try to develop that. And what we want to do there is to try to develop that as a, a a deep water port because it is uh, a deep water uh, uh, facility. You used to have ocean going uh, ships there all the time picking up pulp. But we need to uh, open that up. And what Big Tigang, uh, the reason Big Tigang got into that is that we don't want any entity, any entity uh, slash corporation to control that docking facility in that harbor because that then excludes everybody else. So the MOU between us and Marathon would uh, ensure that uh, the harbor stays open to everybody. And uh, it would be run by Big Tigang and uh, uh, Township of Marathon jointly. Uh, we get along pretty good with the Township of Marathon. We have uh, joint councils every three months and uh, we go over issues that, uh, 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 affects us both and uh, tries to bring everybody up to date about what's going on and big gun and then trying try to bring everybody up to date about what uh, uh, initiatives uh, the township of Marathon is, uh, has going. So we try to work together because I'm always of this philosophy, you know, that uh, if the economy in the, in the region is doing well, everybody does well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we look at a lot of times uh, uh, people think that uh, First Nations are anti-development. Well, most First Nations are not anti-development. They just want the, their fair share of what's going on. And like I said, we don't have the ability to tax people to, to, and to tax those corporations that come into our territory. 
not unlike the municipalities which do have the ability and the fe federal government has the ability and the province has the ability. We don't. Uh, so we depend entirely on uh, federal government funding, which is inadequate, and, and then our own source revenue. So we're constantly on the on the the move to try to increase that own source revenue to all these economic development projects. So, so, so Duncan, we're we're just about out of time. Oh my gosh, I want to know so much more. Uh, right. I'm going to have to ask you to come back again another time. Right. and explore some of these further. Uh, but if, if people want to get in touch or find out more about uh, what to me sounds like a lot of progressive things going on in your community, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the best way to get hold of me is by uh, email at uh, chiefpickriver at pickriver.com. Uh, that's the best way. But I also have a work cell phone, uh, which is 807 Two two eight zero three four four, and you can get me either on that phone or by text. I also have a work phone here, eight zero seven two two nine one seven four nine extension two one six. And if I'm not in the office, uh, which I'm not a lot lately because of COVID, we rotate in the office here. Uh, you can leave a message on that. And our IT guy has got it worked out so that when you leave a message, it goes to my cell phone and leaves a message there. So you can use either one of those three methods. So Duncan, Chief Machano, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it, it's been an eye opener for me and I hope for our audience as well. Uh, I want to uh, also um, remind our audience that we do have a Facebook page also called Community Conversations. Uh, we're always looking for your feedback and your input. And um, that's all we've got for now. Please stay safe and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Yep, me great. See you later, Steve. See you later, everyone. Working together to make a better community. We can create a brighter day